So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a velocity network. For those who don't know, velocity is a type of proxy, just like bungee cords. Proxies allow you to link up multiple Minecraft servers together in a network, so your players can seamlessly switch between them. It is safe to say that every single big Minecraft server out there is running a network, as a single Minecraft server can just handle so many players. Now I did previously made a video about how to set up a waterfall network, which is a fork of bungee cords. But nowadays, Velocity is just the better choice, as it is more secure, more optimized, and in general, just better. Before we start, do make sure to smash that subscribe button. You would help me out so much by doing that. You actually would. And then, without any further ado, let's dive right into this. Okay, so we will be setting up a Velocity network all the way from start to finish. This video will be longer than my usual video and I will do a lot of explaining. So first of all, Velocity is made by the same creators as Paper MC. Just like Waterfall, the difference is that Velocity is made for Paper MC. So if you want to connect a Minecraft server to your network, it needs to be a Paper MC server. So if you're using anything else than Paper MC or a fork of Paper MC, then you cannot use Velocity. Another very important thing to know is that Velocity is not a fork of bungee cords, meaning that it is its own completely separate thing. Now that is good, because bungee cord wasn't really a safe way to run a network. The downside is though that you will not be able to use bungee cord plugins on a Velocity server, while you could use bungee cord plugins on a waterfall server. This means that Velocity actually needs its own completely separate plugins. Luckily for us, nowadays most plugin developers that make plugins for proxies also make a Velocity version, so I don't really think you have to worry about that. Also very good to know is depending on where you create your network, everything might look a little bit different. So I'm hosting my Minecraft server at Alienhost, who is a channel partner, and today I will also be making this network on Alienhost. If you're running your Minecraft server on another host, or maybe on your local PC, then everything will look a little different. But everything will work pretty much the same. Now if you want to check out Alienhost for yourself, there will of course be a link in the description of this video, and if you use code KASSESOR, you can get a whole 20% off your order. So do make sure to check them out. I've been using them for a long while now and the performance is just absolutely incredible. Anyway, with all that being said, let's go and make a network shall we? So to make a somewhat usable Minecraft server, you will need at least four different Minecraft servers. One of these servers will be completely occupied with being the proxy, aka a server that you can't play on, which only job it is to send players to another server. Then you'll of course need a lobby server, so the first server people will be sent to when they join your proxy, and then we of course need two game servers. So for example, survival and skyblock, or survival and pvp, or survival and creative, it really doesn't matter. So four servers sounds about reasonable, so make sure you have four. You can see I currently only have one, but I will actually be splitting this one into four. That's something that you can do with Alienhost and it's a pretty cool feature. So I'm gonna click on the server and I'm gonna click here on the left on split. After doing that, I will be able to split this master server into four separate servers. The server CPU should be 100 because I wish to give one core to every single server. And then over here under server memory, you need to provide the amount of RAM. So I want this server to have 2 gigabytes, so that is 2048. Then the disk space, I'm just gonna give it 10 gigabytes, so 10240. And then I'm gonna call this one the lobby. Split it, and there we go, beautiful. And now I'm gonna do this two more times. There we go. <laughs> so we got the test server, this is gonna be my proxy, and then we got the lobby, survival, and PvP. So when we now go back to home, you can see we got four servers. Now you might be wondering how much RAM does a proxy actually need? The truth is not that much. You can see I currently still got 4 gigabytes left on this server, which is way overkill for a proxy. You can better spend that RAM on one of your other servers. With half a gigabyte or one gigabyte of RAM, you will have enough for many, many players. Of course, everything changes if you're gonna run a lot of plugins on your proxy. So the next step will be downloading Velocity and Paper MC. So let's start off with Velocity. A link to Paper MC's website can of course be found down below. Over here, you simply want to click on Velocity and then we're gonna download the newest version. So just click over here and there we go. Then you want to go back 
this time click on paper and let's just download the newest version of paper mc so first let's start with installing the proxy you want to go to the micro server you want to dedicate as your proxy and then you want to locate your files wherever that may be now if it is a brand new server then you probably don't have any files here i do because this server has been here for a while so i'm just gonna delete everything here there we go. And then I'm going to drag velocity inside. Now, I will be renaming this file to server.jar. And over here, when you click on startup, you will see that the jar file the server will be looking for is in fact called server.jar. Now, a lot of other server hosting providers are also using Paradactyl. So if yours is too, then everything might look quite similar. And you might also have a startup section like over here. But now that that's done, we're just going to start up the server again. And there we go. Proxy is up and running now we want to go to all of our other servers so lobby survival pvp and we want to install paper mc on here so let's also just go to the files drag the paper mc file we just downloaded in the folder then in my case i will be renaming it to server.jar there we go and then start your minecraft server and like you can see, it is currently booting Paper MC. Ah, of course, the nice EOLA accept message. Yeah, yeah, I will accept it. There we go. And now it is just booting up. And I will be doing this two more times. Okay, so we've set up all servers. One proxy and three regular Paper MC Minecraft servers. Now it is time to link them all together. So the way you want to do that is first of all, go over to your proxy server, go to the files, and then look for velocity.toml. Now in this file, we need to change a couple of settings. So the first setting we're going to take a look at is on line 5, the bind. Now currently it is on port 25577. And you actually want to change this to the port of your server. Now how do you know what your port is? Well, when I go back to my console, I can over here see an IP address and after that a port. So 25513. That is what you want to remember. So let's go back to the file and replace this with 25513. There we go. Now over here, you can change your MOTD. So basically the message that will appear inside of your Minecraft server list. You can set it to anything you want. Hi there, how you doing? Question mark. <laughs> then you want to specify the max amount of players. I'm going to set it to 10. Next, we got online mode. So should your Minecraft server check if an account that is joining is legitimate? I would always recommend keeping this untrue. If you do set it to false, your Minecraft has a very high risk of getting hacked and in general compromised. As anyone will be able to join your Minecraft server, even if they don't own a legit version of Minecraft. Now, if you want to run a cracked Minecraft network, which is I do have to say is against Minecraft's terms of service, but I know there are a lot of people who are still playing crack Minecraft, and if you want to make a crack network, then this needs to go on false. Now let's scroll down for a little bit and take a look at this section. So over here you need to specify what method you want to use to forward IP addresses. So you got either none, legacy, bungee guard, or modern. Now, for those who don't know what Bungie Guard is, I made a whole separate video about that, and I will link it as a card on this video if you're interested. Legacy is the same system they were using with Bungie Guard, which I would absolutely not recommend, as it is the most unsafe system in the world. No, you want to go for modern. One. 100%. Now, if you are running a Minecraft server that is below version 1.13, then you got no other choice. You will need to go for Legacy. And if you go for Legacy, you do need to use Bungie Guard. If you're not, your Minecraft server is extremely unsafe. But I really hope that nowadays, if you're going to make a Minecraft network, you will make one above version 1.13. At least, that is what I would highly recommend. So, make sure to go for modern just type modern here and there we go but then next up we got the forwarding secret file now what exactly does that mean basically the velocity server created a file called forwarding.secret and inside of that file there will be a key kind of like a password now we want to give that password to all our back-end minecraft servers so all our regular minecraft servers that players will be playing on the paper servers we created before we we want to give that password to all of those servers and basically by giving that key the only way to join those servers will be 
through our Minecraft proxy. And that is exactly what we want. Because otherwise, players will be able to join those backend servers through another proxy. And because backend servers all have their online mode on false, that is just extremely unsafe. Now, we will take a look at this in a bit. First, let's actually add our servers. So over here, you want to add all of your Minecraft server that you want in your network. So currently, we got lobby, factions, and minigames. I'm going to change this to lobby, survival, and then PvP. And over here, you want to put the IP addresses of those servers. Now, over here, we got my lobby server, and this right here is your IP address. Now, over here at Alienhost, you don't see the simple digits that you're used to, but instead, you will see an easy-to-remember domain. Now, this is great for just a simple single Minecraft server, but if you're actually going to make a network, then we, of course, want to know the IP address where this domain name leads to. So, I will simply ping the domain through this website. I will leave a link down below, and this is the IP address that we want to be using. So, I'm simply going to copy this, go back to the Velocity config, and paste the IP in there. Then, you want to type a colon and your port, which in my case is 25547. Now, this you want to do for all of your servers. Now, mine are all running on the same system, so I can just paste this IP address in three times. There we go. And then, the only thing I have to add is the ports. So, 25581 for survival, and 255. 3, 7 for PvP. Now then next up, we got the server join priority, basically. So in what order should we try servers when a player logs in or is kicked from a server? So currently it's only set to lobby, meaning that as soon as a player tries to join our network, they will be sent to lobby. If they can't join lobby, they will just be kicked and can't join. But let's say you don't want that to happen. Let's say you have a second lobby, or if the lobby is offline, you want players to immediately immediately go to survival. That is something you can do. Simply add a comma, a space, then just copy this whole section and then change this to survival. So now if the lobby is offline for whatever reason, the server will attempt to send the players to survival. If that one is offline, then they will be kicked. And you can of course also add PvP to this or let's say if you have six lobbies, then you just add all of your lobbies here. Now the last option over here is forced host. So this basically allows you to make a specific join domain per server so the players can for example directly join your lobby server or directly join your faction server stuff like that now i won't be using this today at all but it is very important to remove everything over here otherwise your server will uh, not like it <laughs> so make sure to clear it so we're simply gonna save the file and back out and immediately we want to be looking for the file called forward.secret we want to open it up and in there you will see a beautiful code now this this code we're gonna copy okay so on the velocity servers end everything is pretty much working we now want to start configuring our first paper server now i will of course be showing how to do this once but if you want to add three or six or 20 micro servers to your network you will need to do this for every single one of them so i'm going to go to lobby then we're going to the files and the first thing you want to do is go to server.properties in there you want to look for online mode it is online 23 for me and it should say true by default this you want to change to false then save the file and back out now the next thing you want to be looking for is the paper YML file. Now, if you're using an older version of paper, it should be somewhere around here. But in all the newer versions of paper, it is inside of the config folder. So locate the config folder, open it up, and then you want to open paper global.yml. In there, uh, you got a lot of settings, all sorts of stuff you can change, but we're just gonna scroll down all the way till we see proxies. Now, here we got a section that says bungee cord. We're gonna completely ignore that because we're not using bungee cord today. No no, in fact, we're going to use velocity. Is velocity enabled? Well, yes. So we're going to set this one to true. What is the online mode? It is on false here by default. And that's really important. If you've set online mode on true in the velocity config file, then it should also say true here. So even though we just set online mode on false in the server.properties file of the PaperMC server, this online mode needs to match with whatever it says in the velocity config. So not the server.properties file. 
file. I've actually seen a lot of people do this wrong. So make sure to set it to true. And then over here, you want to paste in your key. And there we go. Now make sure to do this for all of your servers. After we've done that, make sure to restart all of your Minecraft servers. Then copy the IP address of your Velocity network. So the proxy server, put the IP address into Minecraft just like that. And there we go. Hi there, how you doing? A mix of 10 players online. And when we now try to join, there we go. We're in. <laughs> we've officially joined our Velocity network. Now, it might just look like a regular Minecraft server, and it is. We're currently in the lobby server, but by typing the command slash server, and then, for example, survival, we will be taken to the survival server. So there we go. We're now in survival. Also, night here. I know, it looks like the exact same server, but believe me, <laughs> it's a different one. And then we can also do server PvP, and that, of course, also works there we go three minecraft servers all connected to the same network okay believe it or not we're done we've successfully set up a velocity network and you and your players will now be able to switch between the lobby survival and pvp without leaving the network which is freaking awesome now even though the network has been set up I'm not done yet, because I'm going to show you some other essential things you should definitely do with your Minecraft network to just make the whole experience a lot better. This includes installing some plugins, and that is what we will be starting with. So the first plugin we're going to install is Lugberms, and we actually want to install two separate versions, the Velocity version and the Bucket version. Now with the Velocity version, you will only be able to manage Velocity permissions. So if you install plugins on your Velocity server, then to manage permissions from those plugins, you will need this version of Lugberms. Though for your regular Minecraft servers that we will actually be playing on, you will still need the bucket version. Now that we're running a network though, there is one extra step. And it is that we want to create a database and link the Lugberms of every single Minecraft server up to the same database so it will sync. By doing that, if you set a player to, for example, the moderator rank, they will be moderator across the whole network. And not just a micro server where you execute the command to set them to moderator. But let's start with the velocity version. It is for sure the easiest. Simply click on here to download, then navigate to your velocity server files, look for the plugins folder, and in there you want to drag Lugberms velocity, just like that. Then restart the proxy and you should see something like this. Lugberms running on velocity. When it says this, you've successfully installed it. Now the command you want to be using is LPV editor. When you execute that, from the console, you will get a link, open it up, and you're in the old trusty Lugberms permission editor. Now, I won't be showing how this all works because I've made two tutorials on Lugberms already on the channel. I will leave it linked as a card on this video. The next stop, it is time to tackle the bucket version. Now, like I said, this one is a little bit more complicated, so you want to simply click here to download it and then drag it into the plugins folder of all of your servers. So, I'm gonna use Lobby as an example. Simply go to Lobby, after that, go to your files, look for the plugins folder, and drag Lugberms bucket inside. Then do a quick server restart so everything is loaded. Now we want to create a database. Now, 99% of all hosting companies out there, including Alienhost, have a simple database section where you can create one. So for Alienhost, it is here on the left. It says databases. Simply click on there. And then over here, you want to choose new database. Then give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Lugberms. There we go. And then we're going to click on create database. And there we go. There it is. Now you want to go back to your Minecraft server directory, go to the plugins folder, and you should see a new folder called Lugberms. Go in there and then click on config.yml. Now inside of the config, there are a few things you should change. First of all, the server. When you install Lugberms on a non-network, this is not really relevant. Though when you're running Lugberms on a whole network, this is really really important. I would highly recommend setting it to the name of your server. So currently, I'm setting this up on my lobby server as an example. So I'm going to set this to lobby, just like that. So make sure to give every single server their respective name over here. Then you want to scroll a little bit down and here you will see the storage method. It is H2, which means local storage. Well, we don't want local storage because we want to connect our Minecraft server to a database. So I'm going to change this to my S. SQL. And then you want to fill in your database credentials over here. Now you might be wondering, what are my database credentials? Well, you can see those over here. So this is your address. 
We want to simply click on there and then paste it over here where it says address. Then the database name. That you can find over here. So simply click and paste it in there. Then you need the username. So the username can be found over here on the right. Simply click and paste it in there. And then last but not least, the password. So to get the password, you want to click on the I icon. And then where it says password, you simply want to click to copy and paste the password in here. Now, I would highly recommend just copying this whole section. So all of this info and then pasting it in all the config files of all the look promises that you installed on every single individual Minecraft server. That way, all of your backend servers will store data to the same database. And if I then change something in the lobby server, it will also be changed in the survival server and the pvp server but you might be like Casasura, my pvp server has very different plugins than my lobby server so i don't want them to sync up well there's actually a solution for that and that is why setting the server name was so important so let me go to the lobby let's type lp editor to open the online editor there we go and over here we're gonna add a brand new permission in the default group it doesn't matter which one it is i'm just gonna grab this one as an example bucket.command.help but instead of adding it right away we want to add context so click on the plus icon over here and then where it says key you want to type in server and where it says value you want to type in the name of the server you want this permission to apply for so in my case that's gonna be lobby then click on add context and then click on plus here on the right and there we go. Now this permission has been added, bucket.commands.help, but only for the lobby server. Now you can add more context to this. So I can also do server and then for example, survival. And now this command will be available in both the lobby server and the survival server. So now if I would save this file, then copy this command and paste it here in the console, press enter, there we go, everything has been applied. But now automatically all of those changes will also be applied to these two servers. Now my full Lugbrum tutorial can be found as a card on this video. So do make sure to check it out if you want more information on how Lugbrum exactly works. Another plugin I would highly recommend installing is Citizens. Now you don't have to add Citizens, but something really cool you can do with Citizens is create an NPC that will teleport you to another Minecraft server. So let me very quickly show you how to do that. Click on download, then don't install it on your proxy, install it on your lobby server. So go to your server directory, then to plugins, and drag citizens inside then you want to join your lobby server and use the command slash npc create and i'm gonna call it a bread shop <laughs> There we go. Beautiful NPC. What a beautiful man. Oh my god. And then next what you want to do is NPC select. Make sure it's selected. And then we're gonna type NPC command add minus symbol p which makes sure that it targets the player and then server and then the name of your server so that's the name that you specified in the velocity config file i'm gonna use survival just like that there we go and when we now right click brad shop he will take us to the survival server oh my okay there's a spider no don't do that but let's go works like a charm now another plugin i would highly recommend you adding is slash hop slash hop actually has a bungee cord and a velocity version so that is really really cool so you only need to install this plugin on your actual proxy and it will allow you to use the slash hop or slash lobby command in every single server so that it will take you back to the lobby so simply click on download then go to your proxy server directories then to the plugins folder and drag slash hop inside then you want to give your server a quick reboot and you will see slash hop is successfully activated now we actually want to give ourselves permission to use it and this is exactly where we needed look perms velocity for so now we can type lpv editor it will give us a little link open it up under groups you want to go to default and then add this permission slash hop dot use you want to simply add it save the file copy this command and execute it from the console there we go then you want to go to your proxy server directory go to the plugins folder again you should see a brand new folder called slash hub open it up and then go to the config.toml in there you want to specify the name of your lobbies so currently the target servers are lobby one and lobby two i'm gonna remove lobby two because i only have a single lobby and that single lobby is just called lobby 
just like that. Then we're gonna save the file, give the server a little reboot once again, and now we're gonna join the server. It will bring us to the lobby, of course, but now I can do slash server PvP to teleport to the PvP server. When I'm here, I can just go around, PvP some people, have some fun, you know, the casual. <laughs> and then when I'm bored and I wanna play survival, I can just type slash lobby and there we go we're back in the lobby all pretty epic stuff and then guys that will be everything for today i really really hope i could help you out if i did do make sure to subscribe to the channel you would help me out so much by doing that you actually would and then i wish you an amazing day and i will see you in the next one bye bye